So this last video dealing with KSP really focuses on how we can use KSP as a way to separate ions from each other um, via precipitation reactions. And so we can use KSP as a way of analyzing mixtures of ions in solutions. Um, so for any material with less than 100% association, you can use precipitate formation and dissolving um, as a way of separating them out because um, they are competing um, against each other. The formation and the dissolving is competing against each other. Um, if, remember, the Q is greater than KSP, if you have more ions than KSP requires, you will get a precipitate. If Q is equal to KSP, that means you have a saturated system um, in equilibrium. And then if Q is less than the KSP, obviously everything's going to stay dissolved. So you can use that idea to selectively precipitate various ionic substances with different values of KSP. So the magnitudes of the KSP is what's going to let us separate salts from each other. So for example, you've got a mixture of silver ions and copper ions. Um, we're going to separate them out with um, chloride because what will happen is the substance with the bigger or I'm sorry the substance with the smaller KSP value will precipitate out first and the number of ions of chloride that you need to get in this case the silver chloride precipitate is going to be smaller than any amount of chloride you need to get copper to precipitate out and so you essentially get selective precipitation. Um, so the chloride is going to bond with the silver ions. It's not going to bond with the copper ions and you can separate silver chloride from copper ions. So that it's the difference in solubility is that's one way to identify the ions. So here's a little bit more complicated example. Um, copper chloride was completely soluble, but here you have a case where we're going to try and separate silver and lead from each other using iodide. Now both of them are insoluble or slightly soluble, however you want to call it, but their KSVP values are very different. Silver iodide has a KSP of 8.3 times 10 to the negative 17. That's really small. That means it's not going to take very much I minus to start getting this ion to precipitate out. With lead iodide, however, look at the KSP is much larger. You've got um, more I minus is needed to get it to separate. So how are we going to figure it out? Well, we need to take a, um, a cal do some calculations to figure out how much I minus do we actually need. So we've got the KSP values. We've got the ion, um, the other ion concentration. So all we need to do is figure out what the I minus concentration is going to be. So one I minus, very simple calculation. You need 4.15 times 10 to the negative 13 I minus to start to get all that silver to precipitate out. However, with the lead, notice that, again, I is squared, I minus is squared, you need a much larger amount of iodide to get the lead to precipitate out. So all of the silver is going to precipitate out first, and then once you've added this concentration, that's not nowhere close to this concentration that you need. You're going to continue to add I minus, and then eventually you'll get the lead iodide to precipitate out. So again, you've got selective precipitation, even though both of them um, are essentially insoluble. So that last idea is something we're going to use um, to our advantage. There are more complicated separation schemes. Um, we are not going to face anything like this in lab. Um, however, just to make you aware of it, occasionally something like this crops up on the AP exam where you have to kind of go through a series of steps in order to separate out huge mixtures. I am not going to put you in this situation where you have a lot of ions and having to do some sort of big huge ladder of separation like this. Um, but <clears throat> they exist. So in this case, you've got a mixture of all these different substances. If you add HCl, it's going to pull out the chlorides that are insoluble, keep the remaining cations there. So we're selectively precipitating 
these different groups of ions. Now, how do I separate these guys from each other? We'd have to do something else, but it lets you identify if you have one of these three versus anything else in the solution. So you go through a series of steps until eventually you've added everything and precipitated everything out that you possibly can. And what do you have left? You have rule one ions. Um, ammonium and alkali metals that are still dissolved in solution. So like I said, we're not going to worry about doing anything this complicated, but I am going to give you a situation where you're going to have a mixture of ionic substances and you got to figure out which ones they are. And you can use that selective precipitation um, to figure that out. This will precipitate with this, this won't, and so on and so forth. Um, okay. So that is the last of all our KSP stuff. Um, we've got a lot of days of practice. We've got a lot of days of labs to do to drive this idea home.